<clears throat> okay. <laughs> Hopefully this works now. Oh yeah. So hello, my colorful friends. Uh, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I'm Anne, and uh, yeah, I try to uh, start this live stream earlier, but I have uh, audio problems. I well, you couldn't uh, hear anything, so hopefully this this time this works. Let me know <laughs> if there is anyone out there, and please share the new link. On, on my Facebook and wherever you want share the link for this uh, because I had to start this again um, yes so I'm uh, doing this uh, pixie and hummingbirds coloring picture and um, same time I try to explain some of the techniques I use uh, I made this coloring, coloring picture for this purpose, so that if you wish, you can color it, color it with me. Um, that picture is available on my selfie.com account, and you can purchase that from there. Um, well, just a second, I will call, um, write that down, so it is sell dot com slash so it is selfie.com slash fine art anne uh, the link is also down in the video disc video description and um, yeah, so you can purchase that uh, picture from there. And before I start uh, doing this, I want to show you um, quickly how I trace this picture on this paper. I don't know how well you will, you can see the, uh, just a second, I adjust my, my camera. Lighting system, so that those lines, those tiny, tiny lines, are can be seen better. Okay. Hopefully that is better. So yeah, I will show you how I traced this picture on this paper. Uh, the reason why I do this. Uh, this uh, tracing is because I want to use better uh, paper for my colorings than this uh, really flimsy uh, printing paper and uh, also because I don't personally like the uh, coloring these uh, uh, heavily outlined uh, pictures so this way I can get <laughs> nicer, uh, um, lighter outlines. And I have also these uh, instructions on my uh, website, so you can check out those also there. Hi Alex! <laughs> Thank you! I had a little bit uh, technical prob uh, problems uh, before, but hopefully those won't occur uh, in, in this this a uh, new try. So, just quick demonstration or explanation how I did this. Um, the paper I, that I'm using here uh, is, um, if I pronounce it uh, right, it's Shuti uh, hot pressed watercolor paper, 100% uh, of cotton, and um, it's quite heavy. Uh, 300 uh, gram, grams, I don't know what it is in pounds, or what is the uh, other <laughs> um, uh, way you, you pronou uh, describe those 
how heavy some paper is, but this is very heavy uh, watercolor paper and really smooth. And uh, this is the uh, coloring picture you can you can uh, purchase. And uh, the way I traced this uh, this picture on this paper is I col used just my regular colored pencils. Uh, I actually found uh, that. Um, Faber Castell polychromous pencils work better uh, uh, for this this uh, purpose than those uh, those Carandas um, luminance pencils. Although that might have been because the color I tried to use was quite uh, quite light on on the those Carandas uh, areas, so I. For example, here I first tried the, to do it uh, with the luminance pencil, and then just decided to go over with uh, with darker um, polychromous pencil. But yeah, so I first colored this really roughly, uh, and uh, then I placed it in in my <laughs> on top of this paper. And then I use this. Uh, this is scotch tape, uh, scotch removable uh, magic tape. Uh, you can uh, uh, recognize it uh, from this uh, light blue uh, in inner <laughs> area. Uh, when you see this kind of a uh, scotch tape that has this light blue, this it means that the um, tape. Is if I take just a little, you can put that on your paper really roughly, even really roughly, uh, uh, scrub it in, and you can always <laughs> remove it without any damage on your paper. So, this is very nice. Uh, Nice uh, tape, really handy. And for Finnish people, let me know where you buy these because I, I haven't. Uh, as you can see, this is very used. I can't find any, any of these, any fr from any our stores. So, I colored that uh, background of this paper, tape it down so that it won't move when I start tracing and then I like to use this uh, uh, ball point pen for tracing and just a second the reason why I like to use this uh, ball point pen is because it gives really nice smooth um, it uh, flows and moves very nicely uh, on the on the paper, and I, can't, I don't know if you can see the little trace lines, just lightly. But be aware, don't push too hard. You don't want to damage your your paper. Uh, and yes, so next little quick tip is. Uh, if you have a hard time planning your color schemes on your pictures, there is this, uh, is it Pantone, Pantone color swatch uh, palette kind of a color scheme um, uh, generator. And I played around with that that thing and made these all of these and these are just different uh, kind of same same color scheme but uh, in different uh, um, is it not value uh, uh, different darknesses and there is multiple of these and you can kind of see what uh, pleases you most and uh, based on these roughly based on these you can 
uh, select your pencils and here I don't know how well you can see here are those pencils I'm using I just <laughs> very nicely uh, place these um, on these little little glasses there are some pinks and uh, browns and reds here are uh, blues and gray colors and some greens and also I will use some in few areas little bit uh, of this uh, uh, yellow and orange colors but those are just on really small areas and um, yeah I will uh, split these uh, tutorials in few different uh, uh, videos um, so that those uh, these won't be won't take too long uh, and uh, in this first first video I will color this this hummingbird here so let's get started um, <laughs> first thing is to figure out what color to use and maybe well let's see I have this this is my old uh, already done uh, uh, piece that I made and I'm thinking of using these same kind of same colors that uh, this little guy have and for uh, especially this uh, wing area so let's start from that that wing and uh, let's see if I can just a little bit zoom more to that Maybe you can see that. Uh, I will adjust that uh, camera after I have started. If if it see, seems like uh, you can't see as well. Usually, I would um, recommend you to print your uh, reference photo in small small size next to you so that you can easily look up uh, the details you want on your picture and um, for these wings a first tip use really sharp pencils the uh, sharpener that I use is <laughs> so cute this is helical plate, uh, handheld helical plate, hand cranked uh, sharpener. The uh, blade is kind of screw like, and that gives me this really long, nice point or tip. And uh, I start because I have this uh, outlined it, I start just very very lightly coloring actually I really not want to get that camera a little bit closer so just a second Ooh. so that you can see and also so that I can bring my head closer to that that uh, paper Mm, and now I adjust that just a second. This is I think it's sharp now. Why? Okay, and okay. Okay. So. Just a little bit closer and I move this there. You can see it now quite, quite nicely. Uh, okay, so 
very lightly. I don't push at all. At this point, I just want to use as, as little uh, pressure as I can. And I can bring this uh, picture here. Actually, I want to cut that. Now, I have that, that uh, close here. So, here you can see those dark areas. And even though this is not as dark as this, this area here, uh, I want to start from a little bit lighter color and just place those dark areas here. And uh, I won't just color like this. I will plan this out and uh, place those dark areas first. Then go go over it with the uh, lighter colors. I have okay now I have a little bit struggles here because I can't see the this is the um, problem if uh, if you are doing the tracing you may get some areas that are not as as um, well traced and uh, the lines are not as uh, as visible as you may like <clears throat> for example here in this uh, fairy's face and in here uh, in this eye I actually colored uh, or drew, drew this later and this face will be very hard hard me for me to do because the this, it's so small so I um, I recommend you to if you want to do these uh, fairies here on your piece, piece uh, I would recommend you to uh, print the paper or the picture as big as you can. I use here a A3 uh, paper size so that is something uh, most of you can print out easily but if you can <laughs> do it even bigger because it's it is actually much easier to do do big pictures than uh, really small ones and uh, now i found that even though this is really sharp this uh, this um, pencil, uh, I found that uh, I'm starting to get this quite heavy line, so I turn my pencil around. So, because it kind of uh, um, shades this uh, this uh, uh, um, edge that I'm I'm using for coloring. So when I uh, turn my pencil I can get again uh, this uh, very nice nice uh, sharp edge so turning turning your pencil that is one way for you to keep your pencil sh as so sharp as long sharp as you can So, <laughs> I don't know if you, Alex, uh, heard me in in the beginning. Uh, I did trace this, trace uh, this um, this picture here from from this. Uh, uh, okay, what is happening? 
what is happening? Why on earth do I have this problem? Just a second. Okay. <sighs> I just hate, hate this technology. I may need to start this, uh, this, uh, Okay, I hope this uh, this is better now. What on earth? Okay, let's see. <sighs> oh. I hope my um, technical problems are done now. <laughs> oh my god. It seems that uh, my US USB had some problem with me. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully I, I uh, don't need to start this again for uh, third time, but um, yeah, so uh, as I was saying, I traced this, this picture that I have made on this paper so that I could use this better better paper for coloring uh, than what I'm what I'm um, than that uh, uh, printing paper you usually usually get so okay here is actually I have even though those are pink <laughs> there I want those to be green same green as this this wing <laughs> thank you thank you Alex for being so <laughs> so nice so understanding um, I don't know I, I just get these uh, weird uh, technical problems always I don't do I I I don't know if it's because of me. Do I do something? I don't admit anything, but <laughs> oh. okay. So and now because um, uh, I have done this, uh, I I now just uh, kind of hype up those. Uh, those details or those uh, outlines and here I will move this here so you can see what I'm doing 
I'm taking a look from here because I really like this uh, this purple violet area here. <laughs> yeah, you are my friends. You're like uh, my artist uh, family. <laughs> are there how many people? Uh, I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't uh, post this. Uh, uh, the link um, that many place and actually don't know if how many people <laughs> came here at the first try and uh, left after I had this, that uh, audio problem. Okay, this is kind of too um, too uh, how should I describe that I didn't like how uh, muted or gray that color I want this to be brighter and I'm not pushing at all let's see this is quite a nice color and now I will do this these lines here these little sh shadows here and now I will push a little bit harder but not the so that <laughs> I would break that lead and um, the pencils that I am using here are Faber-Castell Polychromos these are very nice pencils for this uh, uh, highly uh, or these little details because as you can see these uh, are staying long long time uh, on these uh, nice nice uh, sharp sharp tip there is little this is kind of a uh, under these two and I'll just make this little shadow here and this area will be uh, more like a green green color but I will do that shadow shadow there and these details here uh, with this purple because it gives uh, it uh, more more depth depth and really keep your pencil sharp really really sharp otherwise you can't do this uh, these little details also um, keeping them sharp it helps you to get those uh, uh, color particles on those little crevices, cr <laughs> craters or crevices, crevices uh, that paper has <clears throat> and these are really dark here this is a sh uh, nice shadow there but here is a light lighter area so I need to do that shadow here, but not go uh, to the edge here. Uh, left, I will leave there a little lighter area. My dog is making noises again. That is quite common common sound coming from here and then there is this kind of uh, middle lines it, it, there is not that one here but in this one oh 
went a little bit overboard there. Hi Artista. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Because I'm doing this uh, coloring now with this uh, violet color, it will give me a nice uh, depth uh, or uh, the, that green is going to be nice and um, dark in here. I will, will go over it with... Uh, um, oh touching my camera. I will go over those with my green colors. And let's make more of this here because this is going to be the darker area. Now I'm pushing a little bit harder, but not, not too much. Not so, so much that uh, I couldn't get any other color on top of that. Although these, these colors are, these pencils are very nice. You can layer uh, on top of these uh, quite easily with other colors. So let's check out. I want a uh, more bluish bluish green so this might be just right. Yes, I like this. And again going over those. And it really is a layering process. <laughs> just going over same areas over and over again and I'm not uh, doing uh, I'm not coloring this uh, center areas yet not yet I will um, probably use uh, some of those yellow colors I have some of the greenish yellow colors. And again, not pushing my pencil almost at all. And when I go to this area here, I actually am not pushing really not pushing at all really lightly just layering there little hint of green color highly art uh, um alex i am I am uh, fine art owner in uh, every every channel that I am in, but uh, <laughs> in uh, um, Facebook I am also uh, Anne Koivumäki. <laughs> I don't know if you can uh, if you know how how that is pronounced uh, or how you write that. But uh, uh, I think you, Alex, um, have that the uh, question of a sketchbook on on that uh, uh, Lacri Lacri uh, group. And if I find my just a second.
So, uh, Alex, I am the one who uh, added those pictures from this uh, doodling diary. Same person. Um, <laughs> um, analysis is just a cool piece. I have got to tap it to your brain somehow. Can I use an um, posting this on the market group? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Alex. Um, if you if you just could do that on on the lack regroup that would be nice hopefully the, they won't uh, um, delete the, that uh, that link uh, although i understand if they do so now i have added that those darker shadow areas and now i do a layer uh, for these these uh, lighter areas here with this um, is this uh, this is cadmium yellow lemon and again I'm not pushing at all and as you can see this is way too yellow but I will go over this with uh, with other green colors and now I'm I'm not uh, being careful at all where I put my I just go over this like like so kind of glazing with my pencil Also for those uh, those tip tip of those uh, wings wing feathers very lightly. Let's go over this again with with this green colors. And now I will I'm I start to um, go over very lightly, not pushing at all. I'm I'm kind of just uh, toning and giving a little bit more green for this. Uh, um, yellow areas but I don't want them to become too too dark not not yet and then let's try let's see what we have here this one and I have this dark indigo and let's do this is kind of my 
is dark indigo it's kind of my black I really like to use this one because it's so dark and uh, especially when you layer this uh, together with that one uh, um, red, dark red color that uh, you have in, on your um, polychromos set. Just following this line here and just a little bit darker on there. Yeah, so uh, with that, uh, together with that. Uh, Mm, red red color from polychromos that really dark red that and this indigo color uh, combined makes really nice deep black Actually, now I want to switch to this. This is Halo Turquoise. And uh, I'm really just layering these uh, dark areas uh, bit by bit darker. I don't try try to do the um, <laughs> kind of end color uh, straight away, but rather by layering and layering. That way you you have much better control and you don't uh, damage your paper. And uh, it it becomes more more uh, lifelike. And as you can see, it's it is a slow process. You don't need to rush at all. Although I feel like I am um, now rushing a bit more than what I usually do because I'm on camera. And um, I will later, I will blend this with odorless miner mineral spirits, uh, but for now I will just leave it like that just a little one little layer this is my Pablo pencil it's a hmm, jade green I really love this this color and I just very lightly go over this I try to follow the um, movement or direction of these these feathers here. Uh, 
Um, okay, so next, um, let's start doing the body body of this um, this uh, hummingbird. But I won't do this um, pixie just yet. I actually uh, I'm going to complete this uh, whole picture before going to this uh, these pixies because uh, that way I can better um, value the decide the colors and the shadows and so on for for those those uh, pixies so I will leave those those aside now and now I'm just I'm doing a under layer I am under layering or coloring for this this whole whole area here very very lightly not pushing at all and this is kind of bluish bluish green uh, or jade green and now I switch to this uh, light green and continue I'm overlapping so that I can get nice uh, gradient or transition from from that uh, jade color to this light green and maybe it continues a little bit here and just a hint on here and then let's continue with with this jade color making sure that I won't touch to that face and um, again I want color like this but kind of the movement uh, or direction of those feathers even though I'm not drawing or coloring any specific feathers I'm doing this a little circle and just lightly toning that area and now let's again switch the color this is too dull so I will sharpen this just a second nice and sharp and let's continue I will add those uh, details only for uh, with my darker colors with these uh, uh, lighter colors it's good to kind of plan out those, those uh, um, different color areas And actually, I want here to be a little bit green uh, or blue, and then there will be this section of nice light pink.
very lightly. I am not pushing at all at this point. <coughs> and then I will add just a hint of yellow here. Actually, I really like this uh, contrast between this uh, pink, pink uh, feather or uh, pink um, wing and this green wing. So let's do that also here. And again, I'm starting. By coloring those those uh, shadows, very lightly, not pushing at all. Then, then I have this one really nice color. This is uh, Pablo Salmon Pink. It's kind of warm, yellowish pink. Just lightly layering over that. And then let's take uh, this one. Actually, I want to turn that a little bit. And let's do a little bit sharper. I deliberately leave this kind of hazy and not too sharp because uh, I try to represent this uh, movement movement of flapping flapping wings. And actually, now I want to transit. Transist this uh, to greenish color here. So first, I layer this uh, blue here, and then some green here. Few light light li lines down here. Then let's dry the five my blues. Okay, I got message. Nothing nothing serious. Um let's press this one, but I need to Sharpen this. Hmm. 
there are some feathers coming out from this this a uh, eye and with this uh, darker color I'm doing these little lines <coughs> <coughs> I actually recommend you to take some uh, um, some reference photos where you can see uh, the details I have done so many hummingbirds I can kind of uh, um, go uh, go by memory but um, if you if you don't uh, know what to do <laughs> and uh, what these areas should look like then uh, then please uh, just find some some similar looking uh, photo reference photo for example yesterday i studied uh, the air just the area of this eye and place these uh, little details here because usually um, in most pictures you you can't see the eye uh, that that um, that well it's just a kind of black dot but um, you can still find good images for for where where the eye is more more visible here uh, these uh, little birds have have this tiny tiny little um, feathers and they are kind of uh, darker uh, on one edge so and they make this nice uh, um, structure here so I'm just doing this uh, kind of <laughs> not too sharp I try to curl those uh, those lines and I'm I don't do those lines like this because uh, because the little feathers are not going to that direction but I do uh, color this like like this like this movement but I do then they them uh, next to each other on the kind of movement like like here or direction like so and then let's switch this Just uh, reading the comments. Um, if you have a question, highlight the my name. Hello, Hilde. Glad to see you here. Um, Okay, um, these feathers here are more, this fellow does not have those kind of feathers here. Uh, I'm going to do this uh, kind of scale-like uh, feathers. 
and um, the way you do those is kind of you make a sh uh, shadow on the beginning of the uh, for, um, one um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say scale but um, feather beginning of the feather and do these few lines here and then leave area light or white don't color that with this uh, this uh, darker color and then just do another one another shadow like this a few few little lines there and these are not uh, I will go over this this uh, outer area like like this and then when I do the next uh, row here I don't do the it uh, completely in the next to one but I kind of um, try to a little bit overlap or make them not too even evenly actually now I will take this this picture here so I want to get that tracing color on my paper so I'm uh, because the and now um, in this uh, coloring picture I would do this like uh, like coloring the shadow shadow area or the beginning area here and letting this uh, uh, end of this uh, uh, feather light and then going over here like so kind of uh, switching the you can actually do this kind of uh, structure quite nicely with uh, making this kind of they're like overlapping so, like this this is a one way of doing uh, scales also and then color these kind of shadows let this end to be uh, lighter. So hopefully that is uh, that tells you <laughs> what I'm do doing here better than what you can see here because I know this might might get um, quite hard hard uh, these to do. Now um, I will switch to my purple color and It always helps if you have a reference photo. I really recommend you to use a reference photo. Or you can use use this picture that I'm I'm doing here. <laughs> Go over this 
again I'm going over just those uh, shadow shadows with this just tapping because actually I want here to be more of kind of a small small little little um, feathers but um, don't try to do every individual feather as <laughs> especially the size like this it's uh, almost impossible actually i want to get this coming a little bit more kind of outside here like this and now i want gray color where are my gray colors need to sharpen this This is a little bit like uh, doing fur, just little lines. Lines like here, like this, uh, on the direction of the feather, but a uh, little bit like a scaly. <laughs> scaly way uh, arranged this um, this hand is casting a shadow so I will go over this whole area here with this gray kind of making a little shadow I'm um, here I will I'm uh, kind of turning these uh, these um, shadows or uh, these uh, lines in a more like a u uh u u <laughs> uh u shape uh, i don't know why this that is so hard for me to say u shape really really lightly and 
and now a few longer longer feathers here and again this leg here is casting a shadow so I just go over this like so and but the shadow is not in this this side here but on there you can see just the hit let's make a few few lines like this and This is here is kind of um, shoulder, so I want to get shadow in this here. Okay, and then I'll, I can do that eye a little bit sharper and dark. The eyes of, uh, of these little birds are very, very dark. You have this little shadow here then there is uh, this highlight here and and the pupil you really in this this size you you can't get um, <laughs> get much uh, much of the detail detail down But this shadow here is important, this light area here, and I think this center, um, center dark area is also. And now, actually, this is too, too dull of a pencil, so I need to try to sharpen this just a little bit so that I can do those small scales or what should I call those in here and <clears throat> eyelid kind of doing just uh, lines uh, outer uh, from from that eye and then I really 
lightly go over this And then there is kind of, I don't know, something, <laughs> some, uh, not that, uh, that much of a feathers here and a little bit the same here. Then let's switch, switch to these gray colors, few little lines there. Just muting that area out. And now, actually, let's check out if I have the... This is the red I was, or magenta, dark magenta color that I was talking about earlier that gives this uh, nice rich black together with that with that uh, dark indigo go over this and again with this Then, actually, this area, this forehead here, I want to get really dark. And I'm doing just little dots. Little, little, little dots here. I'm doing little movement like this and then let's make a shadow here let's bring this I try to leave some light, some white areas here and there, so that it's kind of shine. Continue doing those dark little dots, some bigger ones, just... And uh, the way I go here, I also um, make those little dots uh, bigger and bigger because the feathers are bigger here than in <laughs> in here It's a kind of little arrows or you say shape. Just a few. And then go over those with this blue, lighter blue. And 
Okay, let's. Where is that? That red. It really helps to kind of push that the uh, dark, um, dark indigo back there and make it more bold or dark. And again, this time with this lighter color, uh, lighter bluish color. Actually, here I wanted to get that nice shadow and and shoulder. So let's do this a little bit different different way. Kind of there is this bump, shoulder bump. So the feathers are going a little bit like this. There is going to be just dark, dark area. Let's do a few little, little black dots or dark indigo dots here and the further far I go from this peak the um, longer the lines are so here are just these are just really small dots only indicating some feathers and but here I will do more, more of a longer lines. And really keep your pencil, pencil sharp. You can't do this, these kind of details on this scale, scale if you are, have uh, to to dull pencil. Now I switch to this magenta and I'm doing this kind of lines. Do a few of those because these feathers are more kind of scale like. And I want those to be more visible. Those um, if you uh, look for close-ups of uh, of these um, hummingbirds, you can see the nice uh, structure of those those feathers. Uh, so our artist asks, how long have I been doing art and what mediums did you start with? So, um, I have been work, uh, doing art kind of all my life, um, but uh, 
kind of more seriously I've done only about two years uh, this kind of fine art um, I do have uh, work, uh, done done uh, those um, portraits and um, when I was little I I, I like to mostly draw horses and uh, and dogs and then I I went to uh, um, I went to school and uh, there we we did mostly di digital art or n not art uh, I'm I am a industrial designer so we did mostly um, 3d modeling and uh, and uh, 3d modeling and uh, uh, digital drawings like uh, like uh, cars and such and if we drew uh, we drew with the markers so um, I started kind of uh, first with the graphics uh, and uh, watercolors then I in that school we did uh, quite a lot uh, of uh, digital digitally and uh, with uh, with markers I had done a few few paintings with acrylics way way back but uh, then there was many years when I did not work uh, with uh, uh, with acrylics at all and but now I have come back to that those lately and uh, yeah um, so I work it mostly with uh, graphics and watercolors earlier and I hated colored pencils passionately hated um, that was mostly because I was <laughs> too hasty for doing this kind of <laughs> Uh, slow slow medium I I just wanted to get the everything done really quickly but uh, and also the pencils that I was using were uh, I used Derwent uh, colored pencils and uh, I don't know was it just me or, or did I have uh, just uh, bad patch or what why but uh, those pencils were constantly breaking and I hated how how much I I couldn't do this kind of uh, detailed work my dog is trying to get my attention um, I couldn't do those uh, this kind of detailed work with those without uh, that let breaking constantly and also when I sharpened those pencils they just break 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 so I hated colored pencils <laughs> and then I uh, saw found uh, this uh, one video Lisa from Lacry Fine Art had made she had just bought these, uh, these um, Faber-Castell polychromos pencils that I'm using here now and uh, oh now I broke the lid but still it's this sharp <clears throat> so I can continue working with this yeah so she had she had this uh, video where she made um, she uh, did this uh, eagle with uh, with these uh, pencils, and uh, when she when she drew that, she was constantly saying, 
how how sharp the pencils still were even though she had made that uh, much of work already and i was so excited and also uh, at that point then i i haven't i hadn't been in any um art art groups or in facebook or anywhere and actually i i hadn't seen any uh, fine art pieces made with colored pencils i have this idea that uh, you can't do <laughs> things like that things like these uh, with colored pencils uh, to me these were just kind of uh, children toys <laughs> I know it's stupid now, but uh, I was, I hadn't seen any, uh, any real, real artworks done with uh, with colored pencils, and uh, because I personally like the uh, paintedly look you can get with uh, with this uh, layering layering technique. And uh, well, yeah, then I I saw what she could do and uh, decided to try it myself. And that uh, was about two years, little over uh, two years ago. So about two years I have been working with with colored pencils, but I have drawn on and painted my whole life. And nowadays I do that as a living, not fine art, but uh, I work at the, uh, at marketing in this uh, paper, paper and board business uh, manuf manufacture paper and board lines, machines. I'm not sure if uh, the paper machine that, uh, for example, um, Fabriano makes them their uh, papers. Is it our <laughs> our paper machine? Don't know. Should I should check out that? Although those are mostly for for uh, big industries like like magazines or or uh, packaging or so so on. But yeah, I uh, color and draw uh, paper machines and uh, do kind of illustrations as a, as my uh, on my work daily. And when I come home, I drew this. I draw these uh, little <laughs> birds and other cute things. But even though those are quite different, two different, um, different kind of uh, uh, visual things I do, uh, I've seen that uh, the what I do on my free times it it helps uh, helps me on my work and and the opposite. Okay, actually, I want to get this this nice, nice light green here. I don't know if I actually need any um, odorless mineral spirit blending for this because um, now I'm kind of burnishing. And I actually like the look I'm getting, getting here. So maybe I'll just burn this. Burn. Let it burn. <laughs> no, not that kind of burning or burning. 
Oh, yeah. Did I answer to your question? How long have you been doing art and what medium did you start with? So, yeah, that was mostly with watercolors and uh, graphite. And about... Well, I'm 30, so... I have drawn my whole life, literally. When I was... Uh, as long as I have, <laughs> yeah, I could uh, hold a pencil on my hand, I have been drawing. I actually have this um, lovely cousin. She is a little uh, year year younger than me, so we we were quite a lot quite a lot together when we were little and uh, in my family uh, we we like to <laughs> we uh, the kind of drawing and uh, art and crafts are are common thing we do uh, it's kind of way of life and um, with uh, with my cousin, we did this uh, this uh, um, paper dolls, and then we played with those. So <laughs> she is uh, one reason um, I have <laughs> I have been doing art so so much and so long because I had that lovely cousin to do it do it with two together. What digital drawing programs do uh, do or did you use at work at school? Photoshop. Photoshop is is uh, kind of only um, program, digital drawing pro program that I I know how to use and that is what they teach teached on 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 my school. Um, also a little bit of uh, uh, Adobe what is it? Adobe Illustrator and what is it? InDesign. I, I constantly get those two mixed up. InDesign is uh, okay. It was Illustrator. And uh, but on on my work I do use uh, Cor Cor Corel Draw quite much because I mean that there that is a program program um, some people use. Although I should get those all those Adobe programs because those are much better. So let's continue to the tail. Oh, just move this this just a little bit so that I can. No, I don't have reference for that in there. So let's just wing it. Okay, let's see. Here we have the tail feathers, and here we have those center lines. And let's decide. First, I just place the. Um, I decide what 
watch uh, side of the feather will be the kind of shadow shadow side so and uh, when I color these feathers these tail feathers you know um, just a second try to find a clean piece of paper feathers are am I drawing on on camera feathers are like like this and these little lines <laughs> or these little furs that uh, comes from this center line of this feather they kind of grew out from from here to here so this is the direction I will use when coloring these feathers not like this but th like this um, and why did I w why do I use this <laughs> this method in here and not in here in in these uh, wings is because these wings are on movement more more of like a movement and uh, these are more stable so I try to get get the look like uh, these are more sharp and on focus. Okay, that is the shadow side. Uh, and I want to get a little shadow here because it's kind of turning just a little and this is again but I'll I will leave the little lighter area on the middle make it darker on the edge just trying to get nice shapes here and then let's just sharpen a little bit that center and again and don't rush take your time And then actually it starts to turn. Hmm. Maybe this one. Let's take. That one is behind this. So there is a little shadow and let's make so and this is behind that one there is a cast shadow If oh, this could be much darker, <laughs> yeah, Alex. I know know what you mean. Um, I used to when when we were little and little and we did those. Uh, um paper dolls they were mostly dogs or or horses or kind of uh, <laughs> i don't remember the name of those is it furry those uh, 
human dog hybrids <laughs> uh, it has been quite funny to see that uh, we we are now that there is internet uh, to see that we were not only ones doing those but there are thousands and thousands of people uh, other people doing those same kind of furry uh, human animal hybrids um, but we were doing those and they were kind of cartoonish look and it was really easy back then but nowadays I can't do any I they they always start to look more too too realistic looking it's quite sad actually I really should uh, practice more doing those uh, those um, cartoonish looking looking creatures. Actually, let's see. Do I have those? No, I don't have those, those here. Ah, uh, now, then, let's see. I want these, these tail feathers uh, kind of reflecting, reflecting those same colors I'm having here, so that they, uh, these are not just one color, but rather like um, all of these other colors combined so that it's more interesting looking and so let's take first this to drink cold tea cold tea is always good option and then take this jade color Maybe if some of that there. make a shadow here and take this gray Then
Oh, Hilde, that's great. <laughs> I know, I know the problems with cameras and not uh, uh, working or just the hardness of figuring out those little problems you may may face face with those. Okay, actually, let's make on the edge, edge here. I'll try to do this kind of um, I don't know if this will work the way I want. Hopefully. Then. Then actually I want to use this is black white. Just burnishing and blending. Blending this area with white. Now I won't go to the edge. I leave that that edge. I come near it, but not not over it. Just a little hint of a shadow there. little taps there and again this is my trusty red color okay I think that is okay and let's move to the next one okay this is way too dull so you can see this is too dull so sharpen still kind of sharp but just the, on the edge so I need to use that
this white pe pencil, white uh, luminance pencil is great for, for blending. And I can always, if I don't push too hard, I can go over that. and then I actually want to have a little bit greenish color here Some of that there also, just the hints. Blend it with with this uh, light green. As you can see, I'm constantly doing this, this uh, kind of uh, rolling my, my pencil. It is because I want to get that sharp edge.
Erase, <clears throat> erase some of that. Lope, mitä luttaat? Just making a little, little bit darker on that, that side of the butt. And let's blend a little bit with white. make a little bit darker on this this uh, stomach area so that it um, it gives a more of a curvy look here and you darker just few, not completely dark, uh, completely darker, just few lines here and there, kind of uh, to make a, give it more interest and shape. <laughs> this looks uh, quite odd now because I'm not doing that uh, that fairy just now just right um, just yet I am actually thinking if I should do that do that fairy very now that I have this uh, hummingbird done. Yeah, maybe I I do that and then it's it is finished. Just a few lines. Lines here. Actually, I want to add some um, orange color. Or should this this one is better? I think 
it uh, kind of pops out this let's see here and where is my where is my yellow where did i put my yellow there it is it's hidden was hidden. Now I'm kind of jumping around and hyping the contrast and uh, um, giving it a little, little bit uh, more interest in colors. I actually I'm going to. Uh, work a little bit more of this this uh, wing back here after I have done this this fairy and now I have a problem because this this little fellow is so small I I don't know how to do it without <laughs> ruining it. So, first I will take my white, sharpen it. Sharpen my white and I will go over this whole face just with my with my white just to get uh, this uh, kind of because the colors the pencil will flow a little bit differently when there is a layer of color here and also because when I have this white under under painting here, I can get my eraser and erase every mistake I make. So that is one really handy tip for you guys. I go over every area here. Where is that? And also here. Hmm? Let's blend those. And so that I won't smudge that color here. Now there is a complete layer of just white color. And now I start going through it with uh, this is burnt sienna 10% from Karen Das Luminance. Let's add her this little shadow on her cheek and a little bit under his chin and under here 
here and just to indicate the uh, bridge of the nose as you can see this is so hard because these are so small <laughs> why on earth did I do this <laughs> these pixies here now I regret <laughs> I regret doing the, these here but well and now this is raw amber 10% what was this? burnt sienna raw amber okay now I'm kind of blending that eye this is getting a little bit ugly color let's try this This one here, yeah. Let's give him, give her a little bit color, and all oh, this is looking awful. Thank you, Lee Art. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and that like that uh, you are getting that uh, shiny metallic vibe. That was the, what I was aiming for. And uh, the way you you can get that uh, shiny metallic look look is the contrast. Uh, so that there is enough really dark and really light light colors and now I am really just really lightly um, kind of little circles doing these little circles get some pupils there oh, I hate doing this kind of really really small I need to bring my head really close here and try to see what the heck am I doing little pupils and the eye just the shadow here. Can't see anything. <laughs> oh my god. This is why I recommend you to um, do this. Um, this. Um, print this at least in A3 size. Okay. Let's see, I'm 
kicking my camera. Stop moving. I'm kind of blending this this uh, blue color here to her face. There is okay, I need to get some brushes. Just to get something to push those uh, little that wax bloom okay and then oh my god <laughs> okay how does this look like in here Let's see. Not too much. Okay, this area could have been easier if I had printed this out. very very carefully this is not a speed contest let's give her a little bit pink very lightly I can't believe how how can some people do this this miniature pictures because I would lose my mind if I had to do this kind of this is the reason why I usually do really big so much easier Okay, let's give her a little bit shadow here. And again, I'm I'm not pushing at all. Then I blend at the Faber Castell. Try to smoothen that. And again, smoothing, smoothing. Oh. It is starting to get bumpy. Let's make a shadow here. And actually, let's make. I don't know if I will ruin this. Uh, will this work? 
the way I want. But I want to get oh want to get that kind of cast uh cast core. And she is having a green green skirt. Like so and then she is not as sharp as I would want it to be. But Okay, and then no. Let's sharpen this. Ow. Okay, actually first. No. Blue. I give her a little blue flower here. Just this really basic. Basic blue. Blend it out. Pushing kind of hard there and then let's add some shadows okay then the hair <laughs> Thank you, Hilda. Oh, I'm really regretting the um, for doing these uh, little fairies. <laughs> I should have just leave this away, but hmm, lesson learned. I hope you guys are having fun time. Who, whoever is also coloring this, <laughs> the same picture. Okay, and then, oh yeah, yeah. let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's take this. And I will leave this area here, kind of just white. I'll do a few kind of trying to blend these red areas. But this is our highlight. Let's take this 
Пустыню подчистим. I'm holding my breath. Oh my god. <laughs> so tiny. And this is green, um, chromium green opaque. This kind of a um, brownish green. to get those nostrils too too dark but I still want to get those visible really need to be aware that I don't uh, blend <laughs> or push my uh, uh, or try to swipe those uh, those uh, Expect uh, those, uh, the, that wax bloom away with my finger because that that way I may accidentally kind of push a line there. But if I use that brush, then, oh my god, I can't see my pencil tip. Just making that shadow. This darker here and now because I feel like I did that mistake I want to correct that and use my eraser but ah So this is a Derwent electric razor and the end here is totally sharp and if I use this like like this I can do quite quite nice sharp erasing like you can see and actually I want to get that nose bridge um, okay and now if I blend with my white I should get those smoothed. Okay. And 
them. Let's make a little bit darker shadow here. <laughs> oh my god, there is so much that backs blow. Usually I don't see that at all but this is so small that really start get irritating that another eye there is just too too dark so let's do it again I can't see my pencil tip. No, no, no. Let's do that again. Just a second. I'll try to sharpen my pencil tip. Maybe it is now sharp enough. on my paper in here so that is the reason I can't seem to get that uh, as dark as I would want so I need to make
yeah that uh, might be better better way because now there is I I can't seem to get that uh, that area to come to uh, as as dark as I would like it to be so Okay, I take uh, uh, the su suggestion that uh, Hilda gave me and just try to draw that that uh, here coming here. Like this over her face over her eye and this is how you uh, correct your mistakes just covering them
<laughs> Good thing. But uh, <laughs> I could cover that mistake like that. Actually, I will. She has kind of bushy, scrubby looking hair. And actually, she is also having a ear behind there. Do I try to get that ear peeking through? Just a little bit. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. And I have also that another little fairy down there <laughs> that I should do some next time. Oh my god. Yeah, this is a great eraser. I really like that. Uh, although I have heard that uh, the Jakar uh, electric razor uh, doesn't uh, wobble as much as this. I don't know if, if that is true or not. Just a little, little bit wash there and to try to. Okay, actually, I I want to know how long have I been live streaming? Could you could you please check out and tell me how long have I been live streaming now? Let's 
make little dots here. Blend this and then this leg here. This little. There and give this area a nice shadow here. three hours <laughs> so this kind of this is a little bit smaller than my hand hand takes me about three hours <laughs> so this is r really really uh, slow slow medium these colored pencils but I I love so much how much details you can get with these Let's get this a little bit more pinkish color.
yeah um small small details they do take a lot of time with three hours if i had done um, bigger piece uh, i would have done much more because uh, the details don't have to be so so small and uh, i don't know it's some somehow sometimes it is much easier to do and quicker to do uh, bigger pieces it depends on the um, um, the look you are you are aiming for okay. and now let's see where's my light yeah. let's blend this a little bit more Now I'm just hyping up some contrast and some details, making a few, few
few um, shadows. No, I'm I am pushing quite hard. Okay, I think we are done for the day. <laughs> uh, just a second, I will take these papers away and so this is what we done. We did the day. And um, let's take a look a little to that. Just a second, I will adjust the
old now and I think it's sharp now. Okay. So this is our first little <laughs> little hummingbird and we have another one here. And uh, let's see. This is the um, reference photo or uh, the uh, coloring picture. This is available on my selfie.com slash fine art on the, the link is down below um, in the video description. So you can purchase this picture there and do this completely same picture as I do. Uh, and uh, if you want to follow <laughs> follow with me and um, so yeah this time we got done this little bird here and that uh, fairy or pixie and um, the no maybe next time I do uh, at least one of these uh, these um, flowers here and um, the uh, software or uh, the so, uh, color swat generator uh, I told in uh, in the beginning of this video the what I used for this <laughs> actually I I use I do these uh, um, color color scheme designs uh, different way um, not usually like this but I, I thought that uh, it might be handy for s some of you uh, who wants to kind of figure out what color schemes you you would like to use uh, on your some of your um, art pieces and um, you can use that uh, pal um, color palette generator I have the uh, um, link to that in the de description and uh, these are quite handy you can uh, see kind of easily what uh, what kind of color schemes would um, would work together for example here red and red and uh, green this would be quite nice or <laughs> these aren't the ones that I usually like to use or I have these like a thousand blue and um, um, orange quite nice also so uh, just play around with that generator and uh, maybe you can pick up some nice uh, color schemes that you would like to use on your your art pieces I'm planning to do this more of uh, the, these uh, some of these flowers will be more of bluish color and this and this uh, 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 this and this and maybe this um, will be more uh, like this purple is pink color and uh, I don't know maybe I will do background for this piece also and that probably to, will be more of this uh, light blue color so you can do that kind of uh, <laughs> um, planning for your your uh, color pieces and uh, just um, even if you have uh, some uh, accurate reference photo for example let's take this one you could do this uh, this exactly same uh, butterfly with these colors just uh, just planning out uh, some <laughs> what 
dark areas might be more more uh, um, in some some specific color and uh, maybe for example these shadows dark shadows would be these uh, purple uh, or violet color and uh, these lighter colors and the bigger area would be this more greenish and some highlights here and there would be red that might be a good way way uh, of turning that piece uh, in a little bit uh, different looking and still look quite nice so yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just rambling here now hope you had a nice time um, and maybe you learned something please uh, leave a comment if you have anything uh, any questions uh, in the beginning i uh, showed you how i transferred or traced this picture a very easy way on this better paper uh, i have that uh, also explained on my on my website uh, and uh, there is few little <laughs> tips uh, how I how I made this uh, um, uh, tracing just by using my colored pencils and that uh, that uh, um, printed picture of this and nothing else uh, and yeah next time we will continue this and hopefully uh, we won't have as many technical problems as as I well uh, as well, how how much I had this uh, in the beginning of this live stream. Luckily, uh, this went uh, quite nicely at the end. But yeah, have a nice day, good night, and see you next time. Bye.